Hey, Popcorn Kid Crew, it's Miss V, and I am here to read with you. I've been thinking so many people have been telling themselves that they're the greatest. Did you tell yourself that you were the greatest? I want to make sure that you're affirming yourself every day. You ready to do it? Let's go. I'm your witness. I'm going to say that you are the greatest. Come on, Popcorn Kid crew. You've got to say it. I am the greatest. All right. I believe you said it. Make sure you tell yourself that all day long. I love it. I love it. Hey, today is a great book. And this book is about a mom and two sisters. And it's a wonderful story about how a mother's relationships with her daughters is expressed. And the characteristics of all of them are very different. Maybe some of us can relate to this story. It's called The Talking Eggs. And this story is by Robert D. Sansucci. And the pictures are by Jerry Pinkney. The Talking Eggs. Well, I didn't know eggs talked. This is going to be real interesting. Oh, you guys, the illustrations are beautiful. When you see the illustrations, I want you to tell me what you think about them. Can you see? Back in the old days, there was a widow with two daughters named Rose and Blanche. They lived on a farm so poor, it looked like the tail end of bad luck. They raised a few chickens, some beans, and a little cotton to get by. Rose, the older sister, was cross and mean and didn't know beans from birds' eggs. Blanche was sweet and kind and sharp as 40 crickets. But their mother liked Rose the best because they were alike as two peas in a pod, bad-tempered, sharp tongued, and always putting on airs. The mother made Blanche do all the work around the place she had to iron the clothes each morning using an old iron filled with hot coals, chop cotton in the afternoon, and string the beans for supper. While she'd be doing these chores, her mom and sister would be sitting side by side in rocking chairs on the shady porch, fanning themselves and talking foolishness about getting rich and moving to the city where they could go to the fancy balls wearing trail train dresses and lots of jewels. Rose Blanche and the mom. One hot day, the mother sent Blanche to the well to fetch a bucket of water. When the girl got there, she found an old woman wrapped in a raggedy black shawl, near fainting with the heat. Please, child, give me a sip of water, the old woman said. I'm about to die of thirst. Yes, auntie, said Blanche, rinsing out her bucket and dipping up some clean, cool well water. Drink what you need. Thank you, child, said the old woman when she'd taken a swallow after swallow of water. You got a spirit of do right in your soul. God's gonna bless you. Then she walked away down the path that led to the deep woods. Eddie, this is going to be so interesting because Blanche gave the old lady some water because she was dying of thirst. The lady said, God's going to bless you. What's, what's going to happen? 
When Blanche got back to the cabin, her mother and sister howled at her for taking so long. This water's so warm, it's near boiling, shouted Rose, and she dumped the bucket out on the porch. Here your poor sister's near dying for a drop of cool water, her mother screamed, and you can't even bring her that little thing? Then the two of them scolded and hit Blanche until the frightened girl ran away in the woods. My God. Oh. She began to cry since she didn't have anywhere to go and she was so scared to go home. Oh my goodness. It's terrible. They hit her and hurt her feelings. Oh. Suddenly, around a bend in the path came the old woman in the raggedy black shawl. When she saw Blanche, she asked kindly, What's made you cry so, you poor child? Mama and Sister Rose lit into me for something that wasn't my fault, said Blanche, rubbing her tears off her cheeks. Now I'm afraid to go home. Hush, child, stop your crying. You come on home with me. I'll give you supper and a clean bed. But you gotta promise you won't laugh at anything you see. Hmm, what you gonna see? Blanche gave her word of honor that she wouldn't laugh. Then the old woman took her by the hand and led her deep into the backwoods as they walked along the narrow path, bramble bushes and tree branches opened wide in front of them and closed behind them. Wow, that's neat. Wow. Well, who is this old lady that just appeared in the woods? Who is she? Soon they came to the old woman's tumbled down shack. A cow with two heads and horns like corkscrews peered over a fence at Blanche and brayed like a mule. She reckoned it was a pretty strange sight, but she didn't say anything, not wanting to hurt the old lady's feelings. But she did make a promise not to laugh at anything she saw. So since she promised, I'm going to promise too. I'm not going to laugh because that might hurt the lady's feelings. Next, she saw that the yard in front of the cabin was filled with chickens of every color. Some were hopping about on one leg and some were running about on three or four or even more. These chickens didn't cluck, but whistled like mockingbirds. But strange as all this was, Blanche stuck to her promise not to laugh. Look at the cow with the two heads. Oh my goodness, look at all the chickens. Some had one leg, some had two, three, even more. And they're all different colors. Wow, I've never seen anything like that before. When they got inside the cabin, the old woman said, Light the fire, child, and cook us some supper. So Blanche fetched kindling from the wood pile outside the back door. The old woman sat down near the fireplace and took off her head. She set it on her knees like a pumpkin. First, she combed out her gray hair and then she plaited it into two long braids. Blanche got pretty scared at this, but the woman had been nothing but kind to her. So she just went on lighting the fire. After a bit, the old woman put her head back on her shoulders and looked at herself 
and a silver mirror nailed to the cabin wall. Hmm, hmm, she said. Hmm, that's better. Then she gave Blanche an old beef bone and said, put this in that pot for supper. Now Blanche was near starving and the bone looked like a pretty sad meal for the two of them. But she did what the old lady said. Shall I boil it for soup, auntie? She asked. Look at that pot, child, the old woman said, laughing. The pot was filled with thick stew boiling away. Mmm, yummy. Yum. Next, the woman gave Blanche only one grain of rice and told her to grind it into the stone mortar. Feeling mighty foolish, Blanche began to pound the grain with the heavy stone pestle. In a moment, the mortar was overflowing with rice. When they had finished supper, the old woman said, it's a fine moonshiny night, child. Come with me. I don't know if this is when the lady took her head off or when she put it back on, I don't know, but see her looking at her head. Oh, what's happening here? They sat themselves down on the back porch steps. After a time, a dozen rabbits came out of the underbrush and formed a circle in the yard. The men rabbits all had frock tail coats and the lady rabbits had little trail train dresses. They danced standing on their hind feet hopping about. One big rabbit played a banjo and the old woman hummed along with it. Blanche kept time by clapping along. The rabbits did a square dance, a Virginia reel, and even a cakewalk. The girl felt so happy she, wanted, she never wanted to leave. She sat and clapped until she fell asleep and the old woman carried her inside and put her to bed. Blanche was having such a good time she never wanted to leave. This looks like fun. She was having so much fun, she got sleepy. When Blanche got up the next morning, the old woman told her, go and milk my cows. The girl did what she was told and the two-headed cow with the curly horns gave her a bucket full of the sweetest milk she'd ever tasted. They had it with their morning coffee. You gotta go home now, child, the old woman said to Blanche, who was washing the breakfast dishes. But I tell you, things will be better from here on out. And since you are such a good girl, I got a present for you. Ooh, a what is it? Go out to the chicken house. Any eggs that say, take me, you go ahead and take. But if you hear any say, don't take me, you leave them be. When you get near home, throw those eggs one after another over your left shoulder so they break in the road behind you. Then you'll get a surprise. When Blanche got to the little chicken house, she found all the nests filled with eggs. Half were gold or silver or covered with jewels. Half looked no different from the eggs she got from her chickens back home. All the plain eggs told her, take me. All the fancy ones cried, don't take me. She wished she could take just one gold or silver or jeweled egg, but she did what the old woman told her and only scooped up the plain ones. Blanche is a good girl. Look at all those gold and silver and jeweled eggs. It must have been awfully tempting for her, but she did what the lady said. She only took the ones that said, take me. She and the old woman waved goodbye to each other and then Blanche went on her way. Part way home, she began to toss the eggs one at a time over her left shoulder. 
All sorts of wonderful things spilled out on those eggs. New diamonds and rubies, now gold and silver coins, now pretty silk dresses and dainty satin shoes. Oh my goodness. All of this and those plain eggs? Wow. There was even a handsome carriage that grew and a wink from the size of a matchbox and a fine brown and white pony that sprouted from the size of a cricket to draw the carriage. Look at that. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. Blanche loaded all these lovely things into the carriage and rode the rest of the way home like a grand lady. When she got back to the cabin, her mother and sister just gawked at her new finery. Where did you get all these things? Her mother asked, making Rose help Blanche carry the treasures inside. That evening, the mother cooked dinner for the first time since Blanche was old enough to hold a skillet. Mm -hmm. All the time telling Blanche what a sweet daughter she was, her mama got the girl to tell her about the old woman and the cabin in the woods and the talking eggs. How did, how did her mama get her to tell her about it? I wonder what her mother told her. I don't know. When Blanche was asleep, the mother grabbed Rose and told her, you got to go into the woods tomorrow morning and find that old auntie. Then you'll get some of them talking eggs for yourself so you can find you a dress and some jewels like your sister. When you get back, I'll chase Blanche off and keep her things myself. Mother, then we'll go to the city and be fine ladies like we was meant to be. Oh my gosh. They're, while Rose is asleep, mom's planning on t leaving her all alone and taking all the jewels. Look at all the gold over here. Blanche is sleeping right here. Oh my goodness. Can't we just run off tonight so I don't have to go poking through the woods looking for some crazy old auntie, Rose whined. There's not near enough for two, her mother said, getting angry. You do as I say, and don't be so contrary. Oh my goodness, this mother. Oh my gosh. So the next morning, Rose sat out, dragged foot into the woods. She dawdled mostly, but soon met the old woman in her raggedy black shawl. My sweet little sister Blanche told me, you got a real pretty house and all, said Rose. I appreciate to see it. You can come with me if you've a mind to said the old lady, but you got to promise. What does she have to promise, guys? Do you remember? Remember what Blanche had to promise? What does Rose have to promise? The lady said, you have to promise not to laugh at whatever you see. I swear, said Rose. Is Rose going to keep the promise? I don't know. So the old woman led her through the bramble bushes, the tree branches, deep into the woods. But when they got near the cabin and Rose saw the two-headed cow that brayed like a mule, and the funny-looking chickens that sang like mockingbirds, she yelled, If there ever was a sight, that's one. That's the stupidest thing in the world. Then she laughed and laughed and laughed until she nearly fell. Uh-oh. She said, I swear that I'm not going to laugh. She 
she being nice to the old lady? Is she being nice? She, ooh, what's going to happen, you guys? Ahem, said the old woman, shaking her head. Inside, Rose complained when she was asked to start the fire, and she wound up with more smoke than flame. When the old woman gave her an old bone to put in the pot for supper, Rose said crossly, that's going to make a mighty poor meal, and she dropped it in the pot, but the old bone remained a bone, so they only had thin soup for supper. When the old woman gave her one grain of rice to grind in the mortar, Rose said, that sad speck won't hardly feed a fly. She wouldn't lift the pestle, so they had no rice at all. Mm-hmm, the old lady muttered. Rose went to bed hungry. All night long, she heard mice scratching under the floor and screech owls clawing at the window. In the morning, the old woman told her to milk the cow. Rose did, but she made fun of the two-headed creature and all she got was a little sour milk, not even fit for drinking. So they had their breakfast coffee without cream. When the old woman lifted her head off her shoulders to brush her hair, quick as a wink, Rose grabbed that head. My God. Rose grabbed that head and said, I'm not going to put your head back together until you give me presents like my sister got. Oh my God. Rose, grab the old lady's head. What kind of mess? And not going to give it back unless the lady gets her presents. But how can she find presents if her head's not on her? I, I, don't, I don't know. She made a good decision right there, y'all. Oh, look what happened. Oh, child, you're a wicked girl. Yes, she sure is, said the old woman's head. Oh my God, the head was talking and it wasn't on the body. But I got to have my body back. So I'll tell you what to do. What in the world? Go to the chicken house and take those eggs that say, take me, but leave be the ones that cry. Don't take me, don't take me. Then you toss those eggs over your right shoulder when you're on your way home. To be sure the old woman wasn't playing a trick on her, Rose sat the old woman's head on the porch while her body sat groping around in the cabin. Rose, what is wrong with you, girl? Then she ran to the chicken house. Inside, all the plain eggs cried. What the plain eggs cry, y'all? Take me, take me, while all the gold and silver and jeweled ones said, don't take me. Don't take me. What Rose do, y'all? You think I'm fool enough to listen to you and pass up the prettiest ones? Not on your life. Oh, no. She grabbed all of the gold and silver and jeweled eggs that kept yelling, don't take me, don't take me, and off she ran into the woods with them. Wait a minute, she ran into... Did she forget? She left the lady's head on the porch? Wasn't she supposed to go back and put the lady's head back on the... Oh, my God. As soon as she was out of the sight of the old woman's cabin, she tossed the eggs over her right shoulder as fast as she could. But out of the shells came clouds of whip snakes, toads, frogs, and yellow jackets and big old gray wolf. This began to chase her like she was a pig after a pumpkin. Howling bloody murder, Rose ran all the way to her mother's cabin. She was scared. When the woman saw the swarm of things chasing after her daughter, she tried to rescue her with a broom. But the wasp and the wolf and all the other creatures wouldn't be chased off. So mother and daughter hightailed it to the woods. 
with all those animals following. Oh my good! Look at all those. There's a toad, wasp, wolf, snakes. Oh my goodness! All these things chasing her. All because she wanted what her sister got. When they return home angry and sore and stung and covered in mud, they found Blanche had gone to the city to live like a grand lady, though she remained as kind and generous as always. For the rest of their lives, Rose and her mother tried to find the strange old woman's cabin and the talking eggs, but they could never find that place again. The end. Wow. The talking eggs. Well, it just seems like that old lady appeared out of nowhere to help out Blanche. I'm just interested in why there was such a difference in the little sister and the big sister. What happened to cause so many differences? Well, anyway, they couldn't find the old lady anymore. And I wonder what happened to the old lady's head. Hey, you guys, if you like me reading stories, let me know. I have a lot of fun stories to share. Share some topics that you might like for me to read and share with you. Because Miss V love reading. And I've met so many wonderful friends on YouTube. I have a friend who actually gave me a wonderful shout out. I want you to go visit her channel. She is called the Bama Girl Cafe. She actually posted a really nice posting for the Popcorn Kit crew. I was so excited. I was in tears, you guys. Please visit her channel. It's called the Bama Girl Cafe. Now, I will try very hard to post a link. And if I don't know how to do that, I'm going to type it out. Because she was so kind and she didn't have to do that for me. Love you, Bama Girl Cafe. I want to share some love. Here's a hug for all of you. I wish you all the best day. May God bless all of you. I want to say peace and love. Have a good day, guys.